Welcome to the Quest of the Green Ball! Or to Truelli! Another week of matchups brings hope for those of us who lost and excitement for those of us looking to remain undefeated. You know, we have a lot of questions. Will the trends continue in the same direction after a low scoring week one? Will defenses continue to dominate? And will the injuries that happen affect team season outlooks? We have a long way to go, though, as we still remain early in the season. Projections are always a little volatile for this first quarter of the season, so what surprises might be in store for us this time? We shall learn this together, and obviously one interesting way for everyone to learn is to see how our teams stack up in this league. So let's get right into the next... Okay. <laughs> As we remain in the peaks of Ulk Division, Air Jordan travels to take on last week's Game of the Week winner, remember the Titans, at the Gofta of the Highlands. of the Highlands is another piece of Ulk location with a deep, dark past. The location contains a rift fluctuating between times and places and dimensions. The area in our dimension was once a source of power for the Oishi, a place where dreams could blend with reality to alter perception and peer into the future to preserve balance and control chaos. The perfect place for the shadows to neutralize. Absitan's Obesus traveled here first after escaping, entering this region and scarring it with the power of a medallion. After the Aishi Schism created two types of creatures in war with each other, the Dark Forces took control and used this place as a base to corrupt other dimensions. The area is unstable and can trick your mind to see the other dimension when looking through the gateway. It's a scar that bleeds and exists in the same space. And if you walk through it and survive, going back would not be an option. This is due to the gate's wild oscillation on both sides of the portal. But this isn't the biggest problem. Every gate weakens the border between dimensions and distorts time. And the longer they're open, the more they spread. Do not look at the electric charges that surround the gateway. They can distract you from the creatures that roam and hunger. Of course, the artifacts that the darkness search for can all exacerbate the cracks between dimensions. And this space contains a hidden artifact known as the Shoes of Swift. These magical shoes allow mind-bending speeds for those who wear them. To others watching, it would look like the wearer was phasing in and out of reality in random areas. Actually, the magic would allow circling the planet in the blink of an eye. The Stick of Passage was the first artifact to fall into the hands of the Dark Fae. Their plan is in motion and must be stopped. But of course, there's some unfinished business for two who will be in this region this week. Air Jordan will be traveling to take on Remember the Titans in a key divisional clash. As they are forced to play, the Shoes of Swift are in danger of falling into the hands of creatures who would use it to spill blood at an alarming rate. Remember the Titans enters with this 65.3% chance to win, but both teams have questions coming in. 
One, will they struggle through another low-scoring game? Will the moves after week one lead to much-needed production from spots that struggled just a week ago? And will the questionable players be limited in any way? There's a bunch of questionable tags going on so far during the practices. Air Jordan, of course, is going to be looking to get a key divisional win after falling to the multiple scorgasms last week. Remember, the Titans hopes to remain undefeated. Several players to watch here as Nick Chubb goes head-to-head -head with Stephon Diggs as fellow first-round picks. DeAndre Swift gets the start for Remember the Titans in a volatile Eagles backfield committee, and James Conner sits on what is expected to be one of the worst offenses in the league. Brees Hall does look to get some more carries with A.A. Ron Rodgers being out for the season after storming the field with a flag and liberating the Jets from all Super Bowl hopes a few plays into the Monday night game. And then there's Jalen Waddell, who's also a threat to have a big game, as always, if he can go this week, also questionable so far. But can Ayuk repeat his performance from last week with Mr. Irrelevant feeding him passes? Could be key as well. After week one shenanigans, I would think that both the Saints and Packers defenses will be huge for both teams, especially since they both have good matchups. Uh, but there's two players that I'm watching here as the actual potential playmakers for this matchup, the keys for visiting Air Jordan. I look at quarterback from the Packers and waiver pickup, Jordan Love, who bought the rights to own the Bears last week. I know Air Jordan loves that joke. Love finished with 245 passing yards and three touchdowns against a suspect Bears secondary and goes up against Atlanta this week. Atlanta did handle Carolina quarterback Bryce Young, allowing just 146 passing yards and a touchdown and also getting two picks. And this game looks to be all about the running backs with Atlanta's B. John Robinson and Tyler Algier going up against A.A. Ron Jones and A.J. Dillon of the Packers. The thought is that this is going to be about time management, and it may lead to limited passing opportunities for Love, especially if the Packers grab an early lead. But Green Bay does have Romeo Dobbs, who is talented to catch touchdowns in the red zone, and also, if Christian Watson can go, we know what he's capable of after the end of last year with multiple touchdown games. And of course, Aaron Jones is also a threat to catch out of the backfield and make big plays if he can go, so he could always get you points for your quarterback. Still, the high-risk, high-reward waiver pickup could very easily throw up a dud here. Air Jordan will be hoping the risk pays off with a similar game from last week and another 20-plus points performance. And that would be huge, with Lamar Jackson on the other side going up against the Bengals in a divisional battle. If Jackson has another off day, a decent game by Love could be the difference for Air Jordan. On the other side, I look at waiver pickup Puka Nakua, a wide receiver that looks to take advantage of the Cooper Cup absence. Cup, who's on IR and Air Jordan's reserve, by the way, leaves a lot of targets and production for Matthew Stafford to search for. Nakua seems to be the guy to fill this void. He caught 10 passes on 15 targets last week, ended up with 119 yards. That kind of volume is very impressive, especially in fantasy football, and a reason why Nakua was a top add on waivers this week. And with Stafford and the Rams having the tendency to pass the ball over 60% of the time, Nakua is expected to continue to see targets at a very high rate. Nakua does have Tutu Atwell to contend with, who also had 119 yards on six catches, being targeted eight times. And the 49ers' defense, they're no slouch. They could definitely make life difficult on Stafford and the Rams' offense. The hope for Remember the Titans is that Nakua gets the same volume and reaches the end zone to help with an expected reduction in yards. If that does happen, it could be salt to the wounds to Air Jordan and a potential 2-0 start for Remember the Titans. But if Nakua crashes back down to earth, it could hurt in what is expected to be a very close matchup in our projections. Regardless what happens, the Peaks of Alk battle looks to be a good one and a potential very important one when thinking about divisional title hopes, even with it being so early in the year. We do have some other matchups that will be tantalizing, so let's go through those now. In the other Peaks of Alk matchup, the first place multiple scorgasms hold a slim 57.4% chance to win at home against the Stellar Bitches. The Scorgasms need Saquon Barkley to do better and will need production out of James Cook. The Stellar Bitches need Joe Burrow to bounce back and for the Dolphins' defense to actually score points. 
In the wetlands of her own division, first place Risky Business holds a 55.2% chance to win at home against the defending champion Elite Mother Tuckers. The Cowboys' defense looks to go off again with a matchup against the rogers list Jets, and Jameer Gibbs and Tyler Lockett could be in a shootout, which could mean huge points for Risky Business. Josh Jacobs needs to bounce back against the Bills for the Elite Mother Tuckers, and A.J. Brown does get a magical matchup against the Vikings' secondary. The host Siamese Dreamcats look to remain undefeated and hold a 53% chance to win over Green Acres. The Cats hope A.A. Ron Jones can play and will also look for production out of the wide receiver 2 spot with Drake London despite going up against a tough Packers secondary. Green Acres needs Tyreek Hill to continue to do Tyreek Hill things and also needs Deshaun Watson to succeed against a tough Steelers defense. Lastly, in the Flatlands of Scale Division, first place Banditos Del Rio holds a 59.7% advantage at home over the Clash at Demonhead. The Banditos will be hoping for Kelsey to return to the lineup and for Mahomes to connect with him at least twice. Kenneth Walker could also be in a shootout. The Clash at Demonhead needs Josh Allen to return to the quarterback one conversation after a down week and needs Jamar Chase to not get shut out of the end zone. And my gosh, he has enter with a 55.8% chance to win over host Loki Lebowski Thor. My slews have Kelly to replace Eckler if needed, but will also need production out of the wide receiver two kicker and defense spots to come close to the projection. Lebowski Thor has Jalen Hurts who gets to carve up Minnesota, but needs to replace J.K. Dobbins who's on IR which could push the advantage toward his squad. Also look for Kelvin Ridley to continue to feast as well. This week, of course, is bigger for those of us looking for our first wins of the season because nobody wants to start 0-2 in their division. Nerves will be high and celebrations will be coveted. We'll see who gets to remain undefeated after week two. That's the show for the week! Hope you had fun learning about the golf of the Highlands and getting entrenched in our Cosmic Horror theme story. Plus, maybe you picked up some insight for who to start in your own lineups. There'll be no episode this Sunday, but we will return next Wednesday for some insanity and terror. Before you go, check out the League Power Rankings headed into Week 2. Until next time, salut.